Hey guys, it's River Thames. Today we have another episode of Testing the Battlefront. Now this is usually on the weekend, but as you guys knew, it was my birthday, so I just relaxed for that weekend. So thank you all for the messages, but now it's time to get back to work and get back into the battlefront. So in this episode, we're kind of looking at the more Mythbuster side of things. I know that's something you guys have been commenting about. Most of the series is about new tricks and different tips, but you guys still want to see the Mythbuster side, seeing if things will or not. So that's basically what this one's going to be about. I have a few things to go over, which might not be something that will happen every game, but I think it's just cool nonetheless. So hope you guys enjoy the video. So a comment suggested if you have Bosk use his Dioxys grenades, which is basically gas, then have Lando throw his smoke grenade on top of that Dioxys gas, will it then extinguish Bosk's Dioxys? And in theory, this actually sounds really cool. That would be a, a pretty good use of Lando's smoke grenades, kind of counter Bosk and have another use for it. But unfortunately, it doesn't work. Lando will still take damage through that smoke. But like I said, I think this is this would be a perfect feature for heroes versus villains. I mean, right now, Lando's smoke doesn't really do too much, so it doesn't have too much of an impact. But if it could stop and counter, put out Dioxys grenade from Bosk, I think that would be a really, really interesting layer to hero combat. Next up, can the officer's diffuser ability diffuse Bosk's uh, mines, basically, when they're on the floor and you walk past them? And yeah, you can. This, um, I probably don't think this will ever happen online. Maybe if it did, then you probably never realise since it does diffuse them. But, you know, it's just one of those things that we can test out that looks pretty cool. So yeah, you can diffuse the proximity mines on the ground. But unfortunately, what you can't do is diffuse the, uh, the grenade launcher. Now, if you watch my blocking video, you'll know that the grenade launcher basically just explodes on impact. So before it even gets to the diffuser of the officer, it's exploded already. And even if you hit it to the side or in the radius of the diffuser, it will still do some kind of splash damage to the officer. So the officer can't block that exactly, but it can block the mines on the floor. So if you activate diffuser, you might be running through something and you might not know that you've just avoided Bosk. Now back into Lando smoke grenades, I said a while ago about how Lando can throw down his smoke and not get targeted by any kind of blaster, basically. And that involved Phasma's droid, but it doesn't involve the shock of Phasma's droid. So I wanted to see if that was true for Iden's droid as well. If the Lando threw down his smoke, would that then make Iden's droid kind of not find him since it can't see him, basically? But unfortunately, it still goes through the smoke Iden's droid can still lock onto Lando, and it's a bit unfortunate that Lando's smoke is kind of out of the picture again. At this point, I think it's this one's fair enough. I mean, Iden's stun droids is probably her best ability, which is so important in heroes versus villains. But, like I said, the smoke and the Dioxys grenade, I think would be a great, great feature. Now, I was going to talk about lightsaber deflection in this video, but I did a whole video dedicated to that so if you want to check that out it's my most recent one and I kind of just go over what a lightsaber can and can't block a few tips and tricks in there to keep you guys on your feet next we're going to look at whether Chewbacca can slam out of Darth Vader's choke now you guys probably are thinking to yourself there's no way that's possible you know it it doesn't really make sense it's got to be timed so perfectly you have to have the slam available to use in the choke but I have a couple clips here of Chewie appearing to slam out of a choke from Vader. Now I've gone over these clips a lot and I've realized something that I would probably share before I go into the test. You can see that when Chewie does do the slam he kind of gets hit by something else before the slam actually triggers. So you can see on Bespin he kind of flies into the wall and then he slams. On the Death Star he gets hit by Kylo and then he slams. It's not a direct slam out of the choke. So I tried this out in split screen to see if it was a feature and unfortunately it isn't. As you can see in these two clips from online which is where I actually got the idea from. You can see that Chewie is actually hit while he's in the air. So 
I guess it still applies if you get hit, you can then slam because you're in like the air for that brief period, you can still slam to the ground. So it's not exactly a feature, but something that can happen if you're careful. I wanted to go over a few damage values, but unfortunately I've just found out, which was unfortunate, that the damage values in arcades are not the same as multiplayer. So unfortunately I'm not going to test out any damage because it could end up being false information, so I'm not going to do that. And yeah, there was a lot of stuff that I wanted to do, but unfortunately I can't do any kind of damage values. So can the officer do a basically a recharge farm? If one officer has a recharge command and the other officer has a recharge command, can they like infinite recharge command each other basically? And no, they can't. Um, you can do it once each, but you can't recharge command another recharge command. So in theory, you would be able to get unlimited uh, flashbangs, but you can't do a recharge command on top of a recharge command. So if you do want to do some kind of farming, you can have a star card to say that your abilities will recharge faster. And since you do have a recharge command with your friend, then it will go fast. So you'll pretty much be able to farm this, but at a slower rate. It's not exactly, okay, my turn, your turn, and you know, going, bouncing off each other. It will take some time, but it's somewhat possible if you really want to do that. So in a video a while ago in this series, I talked about how maybe in the slight chance that you could pull off a Revenge of the Sith maneuver, where basically Anakin spun around in his Jedi Starfighter, and then the two missiles that was chasing him eventually spun as well and they crashed into each other. And so I tried this out and oh my, this was by far the most frustrating thing to test. It took ages since I had to control both controllers and it was just, all of the AI was shooting me, all of the turrets was shooting at me and I just couldn't get the clip. But I did manage to get it in the end and it doesn't work, unfortunately. It would have been really cool if you could pull off a maneuver like that, but as you can see in the clip, it the missiles don't spin around at all. Um, the ship, you can spin it around fine, yeah, looks like the film, but the missiles just travel in a straight line until they hit you. So it's quite unfortunate it doesn't work, but at least I managed to get a clip for it. <laughs> Next, we're gonna look at dodging force powers. Now. I know a lot of you guys probably have realised that some force powers in the game are really inconsistent. Luke's force push and his repulse, Yoda's unleash and a few more. They don't always work and I think one of the reasons at least for this is if you do a combat roll while the force power is coming towards you, you actually avoid the hit which is a bit odd because Anytime you roll, you won't take any damage, and that's a problem with the force powers because damage abilities. So, if you manage to time it right, you can roll out of a force push, which is um, interesting to say the least. Shouldn't be a feature at all, in my opinion, or it should at least be personalized for just blasters and not for force powers because that can definitely be a reason why a lot of these force powers haven't been working. Yeah, there's still some underlying issue, but this is one of them. Next, we're going to look at something pretty cool. If you activate Darth Maul's uh, Sense Your Fear emote and then kind of retract his lightsaber, turn it back on, you know, that was a new feature that came in, he would actually appear with one side of the blade. And this is pretty cool, you know? It's just something that Darth Maul would look great in I guess and like I said it, it was a missed opportunity to not have each of the lightsabers activated one at a time but to have just one blade show it's it's pretty cool you know so guys try it out if you want to see how it looks it looks pretty good now in last week's I had talked about how Boba Fett's uh, blaster disabler star card can disrupt blaster abilities of heroes and I just wanted to show you guys that again with some others like Leia's E11, it can be disrupted as soon as Boba uses that on her and you know this can be greatly appreciated since Leia can get increased damage reduction when she uses this 
It will work for Chewbacca's Furious Bowcaster, which is deadly in Heroes vs. Villains, so being able to disable that is going to do a great, great thing for your team. And finally, does the shock or the freeze from Kylo, if they're paired together, will they kind of like increase the duration of either of them? So if they're stunned, and before the stun ends, if Kylo was to freeze them, would that then make them frozen for an even longer period and vice versa and no unfortunately this isn't a feature um, if they're stunned and Kylo freezes them it will basically be in a wasted ability they will just exit from the stun like nothing ever happened like Kylo never even used his stun I guess that's because you can't immobilize on top of an immobilized uh, hero which I think is fair it would be annoying if you could constantly get stunned and stunned and stunned considering how many there is in the game. So whether this was an intended feature, it's definitely doing a service to the players of the game. But that's basically it for this video. Um, like I said, it wasn't stuff that you might expect to see online, but just a few things that, you know, for the fans out there of Battlefront just wanna dig into the game. So like I said, thank you all for the birthday messages. I had a good day. I'm back to making videos and I'll see you in the next one. So thanks for watching, it's been River.